Hi, I'm Cindy Huynh. I'm in the 11th grade at Brookwood High School, and this is my Laws of Life essay. The sun filtered through the shaky window panes of the school bus as we rode home. It was some time back in middle school, a time when I still kept quiet at the lunch tables and stared at my feet as I shuffled through the hallways. There were these two boys who sat in the seat in front of me. They were unapologetically loud and blunt, everything that I wasn't. My friend had just left for her bus stop, so I sat alone, minding my business and shrinking behind a pair of earbuds. You know what's funny, sneered one of the boys. Everyone knows that Asians have no eyes, but you ever notice how tiny their ears are? I froze. The other boy erupted with a harsh wave of laughter and hastily agreed, the two practically causing the bus to shudder as they clapped each other on the back as if they had just made some profound discovery. I had never talked to these boys before. Looking back, I'm certain that they weren't even aware of my existence. I gingerly paused my music and sank further down the seat, listening to the boys gleefully entertain themselves in a battle to see who could conceive the most amusing stereotype, ridiculous accents, dog-based diets, and the classic slanted eyes. It wasn't anything I hadn't heard before. My instinct at the time was to remain ghostly silent until I could slip past them at my bus stop. There were two more stops. I just had to hold my breath for two more stops. I knew that the jeers were just a result of shallow ignorance in a bout of humor. This was far from the severity of inherent racism seen in modern systematic oppression. The boys were just joking. It was always just a joke. Of course you get good grades with a last name like yours. I bet dog tastes like chicken. Do you see in widescreen how many fingers am I holding? The seemingly innocuous banter had become so banal that it was almost boring. I had grown up glossing over such petty remarks and, admittingly, even laughing along and echoing them myself. This bus ride was no different. There was just one more stop now. The clash of insults had grown impossible not to overhear now, and I was certain that there were other Asian kids on the bus. Is no one going to say anything? Why isn't anyone stopping them? I found myself speculating with frustration. It was then that I discerned my glaring hypocrisy. Silence encourages the tormentor, never the tormented, Elie Wiesel once highlighted. The sole reason that the boys found their egregious taunts acceptable was because no one had ever told them otherwise. In retrospect, their jokes were rooted in the same racist thought that brings about discrimination, and I had unfortunately become desensitized to recognizing it. My meek inaction only fostered the growth of such prejudices. I had permitted the boys to continue their torment, permitting myself to be tormented. I made a decision. The bus screeched and sighed to a stop. My scrawny legs towed me out of my seat and down the aisle to a halt next to the two boys. I made a big show of yanking my earbuds out of my apparently tiny ears, so there was no mistaking my intention. The boys fell deadly silent as they took in my obviously Asian appearance. Our confrontation was a stage, and the whole of the front half of the bus was its eager audience. Sorry, what were you saying? Say that again, I challenged. I had never seen two faces flush so quickly, and I could sense the rounded mouths around me agape from dropping jaws. I wish I had pointed out their racism. I wish I had said that their jokes were derogatory, intolerable, and frankly unoriginal, but society had grown numb to these seemingly minor instances. I wish I hadn't remained silent for so long. Yet, that was enough for my pounding heart to handle that day and I turned on my heel behind a facade of sanctimonious confidence. I was mortified from the weight of stairs, but with my victory, I had finally let the hurdle of fear keeping me from advocacy.